क्वेश्चन इज दैट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट बेस्ट डिस्क्राइब अ टीरो जीरो डे एक्सप्लॉइड ओके सो हेर दिस इज कैच यू वर्ड राइट दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड the zero day exploit right or also called as by the name of zero day vulnerability as well right vulnerability means a flaw in the architecture right a loophole fine okay so zero day exploit so which of the statement describe the zero day vulnerability okay great so let's go for this thing the options one by one and let's figure it out which one is the correct one so the first option says that okay so the first option says that when a zero day exploit is discovered the system cannot be protected by any means okay uh, that is absolutely not correct zero day exploit means that definitely for sure you have no time to patch it up but it doesn't means that at no point in time you will not be able to protect your system all you need to do is that if a zero day vulnerability has been released out it means that the developer is not aware about it up okay the developer who has created that particular kind of an application or a software he is not aware about any sort of this kind of a vulnerability that is called the zero day vulnerability okay so no time is there to patch it up fine so in that particular scenario all you need to do is that the organization whether it's google microsoft apple whoever the organization is they will be just updating up they will be releasing up a patch you just install the patch and you're good to go it doesn't means that you cannot at any point in time you will not be able to protect your system your architecture that's never the case okay so the first is absolutely incorrect okay so let's look for the second part as well the b option the b says zero day exploit have their own scoring categories in the cvss no absolutely not right and if you are not familiar with the cvss it's common vulnerability scoring system so what is the important of the cvss common vulnerability scoring system right it means that if in your respective organization let's say for example apple okay the organization has five vulnerability in their mac macbook fine okay or in let's say for example in their ios fine so out of that particular five vulnerabilities you have to first of all first of all before taking any sort of an action right what they do is that they will be categorizing it they will be putting it in the cvss code they will be categorizing it that this is a vulnerability which is scoring 5 this is a vulnerability which is scoring 1 so they categorize the vulnerability same like like the disease if you have like in this entire world there are multiple different kind of diseases some are very i would say not so serious if a particular person have those diseases definitely for sure that's not uh, you know it is not definitely for sure not going to be life threatening like the common cold okay but there are some diseases which are having a serious impact over your body like the tuberculosis hiv right hepatitis these kind of things has severe consequences over your system right so definitely it's exact same thing here as well we categorize the vulnerabilities and then we look for the most critical vulnerabilities we patch the most critical vulnerabilities that's what we do in the cvss we categorize the vulnerabilities and then we look for the most extreme one right okay so we take top down approach right so you will be first of all resolving the vulnerabilities that comes under 5 then 4 then 3 then 2 then 1 so this was your highest priority and this is your lowest priority fine that's what we do in the cvss so that's not the correct as well so this a is incorrect the b is incorrect okay let's look for the c as well the c says a zero day exploit is initially undetectable okay till here it's look good and no patch for it exist right now at this particular point in time this there is no uh you know patches available okay that's what it says so for right now it looks like c is kind of correct but let's look for the d as well in the examination always remember if you see any kind of an option and it fulfill the requirement of the question doesn't means that you should not go to this next option okay so let's look for the d as well even if the c fulfills the requirement still look for the d okay so d says discovering the zero, zero day exploit is always performed by a bug bounty program no that's not the thing okay so for this thing this 
C is absolutely correct, right? Which of the following statement best describe zero day exploit? Zero day exploit is initially undetectable. Yes, that's a scenario. The developer is not aware that some kind of a vulnerability is present in its software or the any sort of an architecture that he has created. Okay, and no patch existed because the developer himself is not aware about it or the organization is not aware about it who has released it up, right? It can be any sort of a video game, software, any kind of thing. Right, operating system as well. So it is undetectable at initial stage. So that's why there's no patch. The moment the vulnerability, zero day vulnerability comes into the light, it has been detected. So definitely for sure, what will happen is that you are going to get rid of it, right? Immediately the patch, as soon as possible, they will be releasing up the patch and you install the patch, it's right, and you are good to go, fine. The vulnerability has been resolved from your respective side. Your system is now, you know, uh, well protected from that zero day vulnerability. So that's the case we have in place. Okay. Great. So this was the 12th question we have in place. And if you look for the answer, absolutely correct. Zero day exploit is initially undetectable. Correct. Okay. So now, guys, let's go for the 13th question. Okay, guys. So this is the question. Just look for this. Okay. So let's look for the question. The question says that a system administrator is considering different backup solution for the IT infrastructure. Okay. The, the company is looking for solution that offer the faster recovery time while also saving the most amount of storage used to maintain the backup. Which of the following recovery solution would be the best option to meet the requirement? Let's look for the requirement once again. For solution that offer faster recovery okay you have to look for this faster recovery time is there saving the most amount of time storage as well okay so we have the option of snapshot differential full backup and nic teaming okay first of all is that nic teaming is absolutely not providing any sort of a backup to you so initially this is gone right the nic teaming part Fine, NIC teaming, yesterday we have learned about it. NIC teaming, guys, is all about, NIC is like network interface card that provides a MAC address, and NIC teaming is a bunch, a cluster of your cards, different kind of cards you have in place, okay? So it's that. Okay, so let's look for the other options as well. The other option is the full backup. The full backup is all about taking complete backup every single day. Okay, let's say for example, today I created one GB of the data. So I will be taking the complete one GB of the backup. Tomorrow I created one GB, right? As well as the previous one GB. So you see that I am taking the backup every single day. That's not a great move. Definitely for sure in a longer term, I will be accumulating a lot of copies a file would be there and it would be having multiple copies so that's the problem with the full backup every single day you are taking the backup of the new data as well as the old data okay so at a in a longer uh in long run you have definitely for sure you need to have some sort of a backup in place and it will be accumulating a lot of storage for you Fine. That is why the full backup is not going to be the correct reason as well, because we are looking for the faster recovery. It is definitely for sure would be creating a lot of problems for you and it's pretty slow, this full backup. Then comes the differential backup. Differential backup is kind of a middle in comes in middle of incremental backup and the full backup. It kind of holds the property of the both. Okay. Differential backup initially acts like an incremental backup so let me tell you what happens with the differential backup differential backup let's say for example today i have generated one gb of data so differential backup says okay take the backup of today's one gb of data fine with it correct now let's say for example let me change the color of my pen okay great tomorrow i created one gb of data new fresh tomorrow okay as well as there is the older one GB of data, right? This is today. This is tomorrow. Fine. So differential backup says that take the backup of both of it. Take the backup of the older data as well as the new one, right? That's a big difference we have in place of the differential data. 
fine so differential data initially start acting like as incremental backup but as time goes by it start to take the backup of the older data as well as and you came up with the same problem that was in the full backup that you have lot of data multiple files are there which has multiple copies fine and that is pretty slow for you as well so that's why still we do not have faster recovery due to the differential thing so the correct answer for this would be the snapshot snapshot is quick fast right if you take a snapshot of any kind of a folder file it is quick and fast snapshot means making up exact backup that's it it means that this is if this is a particular 1 gb of file that i have in place and i take a snapshot of it what will happen i have a duplicate 1 gb of file that is it that's it tomorrow if i take have 1 gb of file fine or i would say tomorrow i if, if right how good the snapshot is if tomorrow let's say for example i have 2 gb of file out of this 2 gb of file or that data that i have created only 1 gb out of that uh, 2 gb only 1 gb is important i can take the backup of this 1 gb only only this 1 gb would be important the rest 1 gb would be absolutely you know i would be discarding it out fine or not taking the backup of it so that's a snapshot you take that snapshot the backup of the data that you want that's it you can customize it and if you go to the cloud part let's say i also teach about the aws as well in the cloud part you have the automation as well it means that i can set up the aws infrastructure or the cloud infrastructure such a way that on a regular interval of time the snapshot or the backup would be taken for this particular data let's say for example at every day at 9 am take the backup i can set it up it's called the life cycle policy so i can uh, snapshot life cycle policy so i can create it up and set it and every day at 9 am the backup would be taken okay that's i have in place okay so the correct answer for this particular question is the snapshot the differential initially it is pretty good but after it's uh, the, the days keeps on passing it up it start accumulating a lot of data full backup is taking backup complete backup every single day right so definitely for sure it's pretty slow as well and then the nic deeming it's a completely different concept okay So let's look for the answer as well. Yes, absolutely. The snapshot is there. Great. Guys, this is the question fourteen. Go through it. Okay. So the question says that which of the following refers to the application and system that are used within an organization without consent or approval, right? Without consent or approval, any kind of an application or system that you use inside an organization without proper approval. Okay. So let's look for the options. what we have in place okay the first option is called the shadow it absolutely as mentioned rightly mentioned in the question any kind of thing an application system hardware anything that is not been authorized by your respective it department or your respective by organization or your manager right you are bringing something inside the organization and using it up that is definitely called the shadow it okay okay so the first is correct so let's look for the other option as well so the other options are is the osint let's figure it out why these three are incorrect so what is an osint okay osint stands for open system intelligence right so what this osint means is that osint means gathering any sort of an information which is already available in the public domain so most of the people uh, ask me a question that amit is osint legal i would say yes absolutely because i am not hacking any system okay in osint what we try to do is that we try to gather the information and we try to stitch them we try to get first of all look for the very small details fine gather as much uh, try to extract as much information from any kind of a photograph or video right the location the time the person or the all the person in that particular image who they are okay all this kind of an information as much as possible then uh, i will be looking for your other photos like say for example there is a target and in instagram he has uploaded a particular picture of 
uh, just standing next to a building. So definitely for sure, I will be doing a reverse image and figuring it out what is an exact location. I get to know that this is the particular building or the office where this particular person works. So we're definitely I will be looking for that particular building and figuring out what's the location, what's an organization where it's working. So that's an OSINT is, right? Looking for the information in the public domain, right? You do reverse engineering and all this kind of things. You collect the information, fine? So that's why it's highly recommended by the security expert that you should make your particular whether it's Instagram, whether it's any kind of a social media platform, you should make it private and you should be absolutely aware about the consequences of posting up an image, right? Inside an organization, it's highly recommended that not to upload, click a photo and then not to upload it over the social media because definitely for sure the hackers are so smart people, they will be extracting some any point to any kind of an image, any kind of a data I would say from that particular image in place, fine? So it's highly recommended that do not click and do not post it up. So you should be absolutely uh, conscious about from a security point of view that what are the consequences you as an individual as well as your organization is going to face when you post an image okay uh, uh, recently I was looking in the LinkedIn right there was a, a very good video which has been out there uh, and what it was showing was that there was a lady and she was uh, it was showing that how OSINT could be so dangerous right uh, so she, what she was doing was that uh, every day she was getting it up right and she was taking up a selfie and posting it over the Instagram okay fine then then she was when she was about to leave her house and go to the office she was taking a sel selfie with her mom and in the background she was revealing her that you know nameplate that we have in place right okay so that's the thing so if someone look for that particular photograph now he knows where that particular lady lives and you know about the then he can gather information about her mother and all kind of things right then after evening time that particular lady again is taking a selfie with its colleague in the office so she's revealing now the location where she's working she's revealing the his batchmates uh you know his colleagues right okay all these kind of things so remember the hacker would be collecting all these information then stitching them together that okay this is the lady this is the roommate or this is the uh, you know colleague she's working with right she this is the department she's working in right let's say for example she's working in the devops department and she's uh, you know working with a guy with let's say for example name denny okay and he's very good she's working in let's say in microsoft so what i can do is that after getting so much information about my target what i will be doing is that I will be calling my target at the middle of the night that I am Denny's friend or his brother and Denny is in, you know, urgent need. He is, uh, he has faced some, some sort of an accident and I need uh, immediately 500 or $5,000. Can you please post it me immediately? Okay. So immediately she would be transferring to my prospective bank. Fine. So remember when you expose, when you put up any kind of a video image, anything, be sure about it that who will be looking for it right because the hackers extract information you can find out the time the day the location where that particular image was being taken so that's why how dangerous this particular OSINT is okay the OSINT does not fulfill the requirement of the question but definitely in itself it is a very dangerous thing and remember OSINT doing OSINT is not a illegal thing you are already if you by yourself is posting up an image in the Instagram or the Facebook how does how it makes up an illegal thing right I'm just a particular person and I have impersonated myself as your old college friend and you've accepted my uh, Facebook request or any kind of request now I can scroll through your particular account and gather information as much as I can right and then I will be making attacking you with a much more sophisticated social engineering attacks so that's the thing we have in place okay that's called the OSINT Okay, then you have the dark web. Dark web, as we all know, that's kind of a thing which we use, which is, you know, kind of completely separate from the rest of the internet and a lot of illegal things, kind of things that happens there, right, in the dark web, okay? So there is a very famous browser which is by the name of uh, Onion Browser, right? We use it up to access it, okay? Not recommended for those individuals who absolutely have does not any sort of an idea about the cyber security because a lot of things can go wrong there fine okay so dark 
web does not also fulfill the requirement of the question then we have then we have the insider threat yesterday we talked about insider threat is an employee of the organization which is still working inside the organization but the problem with the insider threat is that he is leaking out the information okay that is called the insider threat he could be leaking it out to some other uh, you know uh, some other organization or to some other governments or that can consider as a uh, insider threat or he can you know share selling it to the, over the dark web that is also a case okay so the correct thing is the shadow IT a thing where you are not allowed to bring software application hardware any kind of thing without the consent okay that's a thing great perfect so now let's move to the next question question says that what is open source intelligence OSINT okay that's right rightly mentioned you or explained to you in the previous question okay so let's look for it and i don't think that any of you would face any kind of an issue problem understanding this ocean part because i have already explained you thoroughly about it okay great so the question says that obtaining information physical access let's look for the options right the first option is that obtaining information physical access to premises no this is incorrect right or even access to user account through the art of persuasion okay everything looks perfect but the physical access control is incorrect and right this is incorrect so that's completely make this it option invalid okay then the b option says that the means of organization will take to protect the confidentiality availability and integrity which is called by the name of cia right okay confidentiality integrity and availability this is these are the three pillars of information security and then we have additional two as well which is called by the name of non reputation and authentication okay okay so osint is also not about protecting your confidentiality it has nothing to do it's an information security the correct answer for this would be your information security okay great then the c option we have in place it talk about using web search tool and social media to obtain information about the target yes absolutely it looks uh, the correct definition of it right social media tool or any kind of another things you have in place website fine public articles that all can be you know be the source through which i can collect information about my target right not just social media uh, any kind of an art article published over the newspapers or any sort of an website and all these kind of things i can use it up but information that is already publicly available there okay so d is talks about using software tool to obtain information about a host or network topology no it kind of looks like we are talking about network hacking we are hacking into a network uh, no we are not osint is not about any sort of an hacking okay it's about gathering information about your particular target and the source is mostly those photos data which is already in the public domain okay great or whether it's some you have already posted in the social media right whether it's your you know twitter which is now x or whether it's facebook instagram fine instagram particularly what i have seen is that instagram is the most used place for osint nowadays okay so be aware about it that two things you have to be very sure about it first thing is that make your particular respective account private irrespective of your gender first of all that right second thing is that be aware about who you are making friend with over the particular instagram and sharing your particular photos okay never underestimate that sometime people impersonate as well i can by myself i'm telling you as well because i do this hackings as well right for le legally right in the organization teach them as well i can impersonate you your friend right i know that there is a particular person with the name of vinay and i can impersonate as a vinay and send a request and i can make a fake id instagram id take the image from vinay's actual profile and put it inside my fake and then send to all the vinay's friend that this is my instagram and after two or three days asking from money from them trust me people has fallen and lost thousands of dollars so always be aware about who you're making friend with who you're providing access and make your profiles whether it's a snapshot snapchat or any kind of a platform we should always aware about what kind of content you by yourself is posting it out because it can backfire for sure okay 
that's the thing that's the name we have in player the backfire is called the ocean fine so we should be always aware about it great okay so let's look for the answer absolutely the answer is c which all of you has rightly mentioned very good okay guys so right look for the next question so guys this is the question go through it okay guys so let's look for the particular question the question says that an organization discovered files with proprietary financial data that has been deleted okay and the file has been recovered from the backup but every time the chief financial officer log into the file server the same file will delete again it means that there is something which is happening again and again the file has been deleted you take the backup right you have a backup right to take a backup you just using the particular backup you gain the uh, file once again it is deleted again again you take up uh, through the backup again you get get the particular file again it is deleted right so some sort of action is there which is repeated okay so no other user are experiencing this particular issue okay so this is an individual particularly the chief financial officer is getting it up fine which of the following type of malware is most likely causing this particular behavior right malware means guys first of all malware means malicious code right and virus worm right trojan ransomware all comes under your malware part fine okay so now in this particular part what we have in place is that we have to figure it out which is the respective malware we have okay great so now what it is so first of all we look at right as per the behavior as per the scenario that has been flagged it out fine from first point of view it looks like if the chief financial officer or the chief technical officer or the ceo or the cto or these big uh, your senior managers are being attacked so definitely for sure at some point in time it looks for the veiling attack right veiling it attack is particularly in the phishing is those kind of an attack where you attack the ceo cto cfo right okay that is happening but okay so what but really it doesn't look like it's a phishing attack definitely is happening over the chief financial officer but the file is been getting deleted again and again that's a big problem so let's look for the what is the malware behind it okay the first is the logic bomb logic bomb guys is it kind of a malware we have in place which is a code right it's a code we all know there is a different kind of programming languages we have in place right across the globe there is you know python go ruby okay javascript and plenty of it so using those kind of for programming languages what you do is that you create up a code which is malicious it means that when that particular piece of code run it could be in java javascript irrespective of that fine you when that particular piece of code runs definitely for sure the machine upon which it runs it get some sort of damage right that's the thing that's the malicious code in general so logic bomb is a code it's not actually a physical time bomb or any any sort of an atomic bomb it's not that it is just a piece of code you have in place which could be written in any language fine but the interesting thing with this particular code is that it get executed only when certain conditions are met let's say for example let's take um, for here kimi okay so kimi is there in the session let what i need to do is that i need to create a logic bomb for kimi so what i will be doing is that i will be creating up this particular piece of a code that delete all the files right in whichever directory it is or whichever folder it is present completely wipe out kimi's complete system this is a particular code that i have written but i am saying that execute this particular piece of code right that complete wiping out all of its hard disk on 10 am tomorrow morning so this particular piece of code this malicious code which could be written in python java javascript c++ or c whatever language would be running only at 10 am in mean time it will be in a dormant state just lying there okay but immediately when there is the 10 am this particular piece of code would be running and kimi's complete system drives all the hard drive all these operating everything 
every piece of a data present over the hard drive would be completely wiped out. Okay, that is exactly what a logic bomb is. So as per the particular question, the scenario which has been given, it looks like someone has inserted a logic bomb in this particular scenario, right? Whenever, see, this is a thing, this is a kind of a condition it has been creating, right? So when this particular same file is being deleted, right? When the chief financial officer logs in inside it, other are not experiencing. It means that there is something, some uh, situation is being set it up when this chief financial officer logged in, right? And access this particular file, the file gets deleted. So this is someone has created a logic bomb there, right? A situation based, uh, you know, kind of a bomb, you can say it up, okay? where you can specify the time date as well. It means that I can hack into a particular system, any one of your system, and I can insert up a logic bomb and the logic bomb would be with the configuration that after two days or after two months, wipe out all of its data. So after two months, you are suddenly one day you will be seeing that all of your data has been gone. Then you will be thinking that some my system has been compromised, but you will never get an idea that Two, year, two months back, someone have already compromised your system, already inserted a malware, steal in the complete uh, sensitive information and then have set it up. So that's why logic bomb can be dangerous, fine. In, 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 meanwhile, when they are not executed, they are just sitting there in a dormant state, okay? That's the thing, okay? So initially it's look like a situation-based problem, right? When this particular certain individual goes to a certain file, it gets deleted again and again and again. Okay, so it looks like it's a problem with the logic bomb, okay? So it's a uh, okay. So this is the correct answer. Let's look for the others as well, right? Why this they are not correct? Second is crypto malware. See crypto malware. Okay, how many of you are aware about crypto mining? Right, this yeah. Okay, great. Right. So we have these Bitcoin, right, and a Doge coin and multiple other cryptocurrencies across the globe. Fine. Uh, whether they should be legalized in some part of the world, they are legalized, some part of the world, they are not fine. That's completely a uh, debatable issue, right? They have their own pro and cons as well. Fine. Okay. So, but we look, we are coming with this crypto malware. Crypto malware means, see, remember these, uh, I would say cryptocurrencies, fine. They need in order to mine them, right? For performing crypto mining and getting this, these kind of coins right or the cryptocurrencies you need some systems which should have good processing power right crypto mining in short means that your particular laptop or any kind of a system in place should perform complex calculation when that particular servers will be performing complex very complex calculation then you will be getting some few cryptocurrencies right same with the bitcoin and all those kind of things as well so what these attackers hackers are so smart what they will be doing is that they will be creating up a virus okay and they let's say for example a virus has been created this particular virus has been attached to a movie let's say for example Oppenheimer or Barbie right okay so let's say for example Oppenheimer okay so now you go to a daily torrent website or telegram channels where multiple uh, we have telegram channels today as well which are illegally you know uh, providing you this uh, this uh, you know animations, uh, anime, as well as movies as well. So you go and up, you just upload it up here. You download it up, okay? So when you up, download this particular movie, the virus also gets downloaded in your particular spectrum. So now, the, remember, the virus is the crypto malware. What will it will do? It will start eating up your particular system. It means that if you have i5 or i let's say for example, i7, 12th generation and 16 GB of RAM, it is for your own work, right? It You could be a pen tester or a, a developer, full full stack developer or what can, any kind of a job you have in place. So you have purchased this particular laptop for or your PC for your own purpose. Fine, well, or for playing video games, whatever it is. But remember, this crypto malware would be start eating your particular system, this processing power, this RAM for mining, for crypto mining. It means that I am a hacker, I have, attach this particular crypto malware to a movie you downloaded that particular movie and now your particular system has been infected with crypto malware and now it means that your particular pc would be utilized for doing this complex calculation which i will be beneficial for 
and as an end user whose system has been compromised you will be seeing that your system even if it is having so good a configuration 16 gb of ram ddr5 right very fast 17 gb uh, sorry i7 12th generation good as well fine so if that's still you are your system would be start hanging okay and you'll still see that whenever you open up the task manager the cpu utilization is 90 100 fine that's an, it means that someone is already utilizing your particular systems configuration to fulfill his own agenda so it means that you are system is you cannot use your normal laptop for any kind of a thing in place that is the crypto malware a malware that is used for crypto mining it means that after your particular system is being used it is will be doing a uh, use for bitcoin all these kind of things and i will be benefited from it okay that's it so this kind of things are also there fine so crypto malware i do not think that this kind of uh, the question is talking about any kind of the scenario spyware spyware guys is a kind of a malware it spy upon you it will be having an access of your webcam so it's, it's a good idea that what you need to do is that you should hide your particular webcam as well it should be having an access to your particular uh, you know recording as well fine your mic whatever you're saying access to your camera gallery so in short spyware spy upon you okay that's the thing so what it will be doing is that let's say for example if your particular mobile phone or a laptop has been infected by a spyware it will be stealing sensitive information and then sending it to me then what i will be doing is that i will be taking that particular piece of an Im image or the video and then i will be blackmailing you or gathering information about you as much as possible fine that's the spy where we have in place okay so still remember the chief financial officer is not being spied upon the problem here is that the file gets deleted when he logs in that's the biggest problem we have in place okay so spyware is also not the thing then we have remote access trojan Trojan or remote access trojan is a kind of again a malware and what it does is that it the, the characteristic property of a trojan is that it normally looks like a normal file but initially it's a inside it it's a uh, malicious file and what it does it provides backdoor access it creates multiple backdoor access fine so even if let's say for example a virus is there and your antivirus do a scan and you kicks it out of the particular system in place okay great but this particular trojan has created these loopholes these cracks in your particular security architecture and then using these cracks or loopholes or these shortcuts he will be again coming back to your particular system right that's what the trojan does okay so this is again not the scenario here so if you have a trojan again it will be coming again and again and again and again till those windows are being closed those loopholes right that has been created by the trojan for re-entry again and again and again okay so for this particular question guys the correct thing is the logic bomb logic bomb remember it's a not actually a physical bomb it's a malicious code you have in place and this particular malicious code get executed fine when a certain conditions are met you can specify what that particular certain conditions are fine okay great so this was this question and look for the answer as well absolutely the answer is the logic bomb so guys let's look for the next question the 17th question we have in place the question this is the question guys look for this the question says that during an incident response an analyst applied rule to all inbound traffic on the broader firewall okay that and implements acl fine on each critical server okay looks fine following an investigation the company realized it's still vulnerable because the outbound traffic outbound means the traffic that is going from your respective organization to the internet inbound traffic means the traffic that is coming from the internet to your respective organization that is inbound and outbound you're from going from your respective organization to the outside world okay it's not restricted and the adversary is able to maintain a presence in the network okay so the attacker is still able to have an access to your respective network right so in which of the following stages of the cyber kill chain right yesterday we talked about it as well is the adversary adversary currently operating the first one guys we have in place is the reconnaissance phase okay so first is the reconnaissance phase in the reconnaissance phase remember the reconnaissance phase talks about that your particular 
you gather the information about the target as much as possible. Let's say, for example, J is there, right? And you want J to uh, hack into a system in place, fine, or his corporate laptop in place. So what you need to do is that you need to gather as much information about the J as possible. What you will be doing is that looking for his Instagram, social media platform, profile, but matrimonial site, dating apps, right? Anywhere where he has presented any kind of, uh, you know, revealed as any sensitive information, the profession he's working in, the industry he's working in, the organization, how many years of experience he has, all these kind of things we talked about in the reconnaissance. So I don't think reconnaissance is fulfilling it up. We are not gathering information about it here in this particular part. Fine. Okay. Then comes the command and control. Command and control means that it's kind of a server we have in place in this particular command and control. And in command and control, guys, we control the bot, right? The bot, if your system has been compromised by any sort of a virus, it is set technically, it is now converted into a bot. Okay, that it means that your system is now set. Fine. And to control all these thousands and thousands of bots across the globe, you need to have something which is called the server, which is called by the name of CNC, uh, also has an another name called command and control. So no command and control is also not going to the case because there is no case, right? Remember, the thing is that the adversary is able to still maintain the presence of the network in place. Okay. Then we have the option. In the cyber kill chain, we have seven steps. Action on an objective was the last one. Fine. Action and objective talks about that. What are the requirements, right? We have in place, okay? The, what was the fulfillment? What was the whole objective of the particular hack? You have, want to hack into this particular system. You want to, you know, steal the information. What was your respective agenda? All you need to do is that you want to just sit over their network and spy upon them, what kind of files they are sharing, which kind of keys they are keeping and all this kind of information, fine? So from the particular question, it looks like it is action on objective, right? That's what the objective of the attacker was to maintain a presence in the network and he he was actually able to do it up fine so that's called the action on objective then you have the exploitation part exploitation means that that particular piece of a malware or a virus has been running over a particular system in place fine so for this particular case action on objective right the hacker is fulfilling his particular objective of the hacking and maintaining a presence inside the particular network fine so let's look for the answer absolutely action on objective so guys now look for the let's look for the other question in place this is particularly the question from the cloud guys look for it okay the question says that a cloud service provider has created an environment where customer can connect existing local network to the cloud for additional computing resources right so it's created up a cloud environment where the customer can connect to existing local network to the cloud for additional computing resources, right? And block internal HR application from reaching the cloud. Which of the following cloud model is being used? Okay, so let's go for this particular part. Public cloud for this particular matter, fine. It looks like, but here we are talking about, it blocks internal HR application from reaching the particular cloud. It means that he is not using the public cloud. Okay, here also public cloud is not public cloud means that any sort of a cloud platform where anyone out of all of you, anyone can go and create any sort of an account that is guys is called your particular public cloud. Fine, that is exactly a public cloud. So uh, you are sharing the particular resources with everyone. Fine, that is your respective public cloud. Fine. So here we are restricting right HR application from reaching the particular cloud. So this is not a public cloud. So let's talk about the community cloud. Community cloud means there are group of people with same intention and they bear, they are building up the cloud platform. Let's say for example, these are the different banks you have in place. Bank one, bank two, bank three. So what they do are trying to do is that they are creating the perspective, I would say uh, a cloud server specifically for them right 
that is the community cloud where they are there is a group of people or the companies they comes together with same intention and most of the time they are working in the same i would say industry so they are all can be all corporate giants uh, like oil uh, they could be all working in the oil industry or in the banking sector and they what they do they create up a cloud platform for themselves a private cloud i would say and what's the benefit of sharing it up the sharing is of the cost and the resources so let's say for example the running of this particular cloud which is accessed by only three individuals it let's let's say for example $30000 hypothetically 30000 us dollar okay so it will be split between three individuals fine so each one one would be getting you know like a 10000 of it fine 10000 dollar each one would be getting it up so you are getting a very good private system private cloud but at a very cheap cost because you are sharing between the individuals who are uh, in the same industry that's called the community cloud fine so we still we are not talking about the community cloud here then you have the hybrid cloud okay that's interesting hybrid cloud talks about public and private cloud private means it's all up to you you decide fine that Uh, you know that particular cloud is there and you can access it and only those individuals who have the right credential can access it up as well let's say for example inside the infosec train we have the private cloud we where we have our sensitive data right only the employees only the trainers can access that particular private cloud with the right credential in place fine so that's a public cloud so that's a private cloud it's a private resource it gets does not open to the outside world only the authorized individuals are able to log in inside it up okay hybrid cloud guys is the combination of the public and the private so it means that in the hybrid cloud as per the question it says that it is blocking internal hr application from reaching the cloud it looks it is the private one fine and customer can connect to the existing local network to the cloud for additional computing resources right this is the public so it means that half of the architecture is in the public cloud and half of the architecture is in the private cloud if that's the scenario you have your hybrid cloud as well i can give you another example of a hybrid cloud let's say for example there is an amazon sale that is about to come okay now what will happen is that normally the sale is going to be there for 3 days fine and they assume that in this 3 days the number of traffic or the number of individual that is coming to go to the this particular website is going to be let's say 5000 but remember this 5000 is the additional people that are going to come to this particular sale for only 3 days fine this is amazon and what they will be doing is that they have their own server as well fine and this particular server is normally handling 8000 individual on a daily basis so what they will be doing this will this is your particular private fine private server you have in place and then for the rest of this 5000 what they will be doing they will be making it in the aws or in the aws or the azure or in the public cloud so it means that the rest of that the 8000 of this particular people would be managed by the private cloud of the amazon fine private cloud mean private servers fine and the rest of it the public one would be mean managing the 3000 or the 5000 people after a few days when this particular sale is over this public cloud or the server that is running in the aws would be completely removed okay that's the beauty of the hybrid cloud you have some of the part of your infrastructure in the public cloud and some of it in the private cloud in place then private cloud means private entity it's your private entity like your car your house it's private to you right no one can come inside it without your proper authorization same way with the private cloud fine okay great so this is so let's look for the answer as well the answer is the hybrid cloud the combination of the public as well as the private part private cloud So guys, now let's go for the next question, please. Nineteenth one. Okay. So guys, look for this particular question. Okay. So the question says that guys, let's read the particular question. 
the question says that an organization is building backup server rooms in geographically diverse location different part of the world they are looking at uh, or different part they are creating up this particular servers in place right the chief information security officer implement a requirement on the project that state that the new hardware cannot be susceptible to the same vulnerability in the ex existing server room so it means that there is some sort of a hardware which is already being used and it is prone to some sort of a vulnerability right so it's saying that that particular hardware the new one right should not be susceptible to the vulnerability it means that if let's say for example this is location a this is location b and this is location c right you are creating this new location and this is an older location which is let's say for example location d it has using up an hardware any kind of an hard disk any kind of a motherboard any kind of an hardware in place and this particular hardware is prone to some kind of a problem a vulnerability right so it's saying that it cannot be susceptible to the same vulnerability in the existing server rooms which one should be the correct way we should should you know the engineer should consider it up the first one says purchase hardware from the different vendor right this looks good initially right okay let's before jumping into whether it's correct or not right whether it's the actual answer let's look for the other option as well but initially when you look for this particular option purchasing a hardware from different vendor initially it's look good right okay but let's does not uh, underestimate the b c d b c and d okay for the beep it says that migrating workload to the public cloud infrastructure okay but the problem here is that in the public cloud infrastructure also in the back end the cloud provider would be using some sort of an hardware as well that particular hardware can also be using the same thing so it does not resolve my particular issue if let's say for example if there is a particular company xyz and that is creating up a any sort of a hardware motherboard let's say for example that particular motherboard has some sort of a vulnerability which my particular officer is saying not to use right and the, if i upgrade it or migrate in my infrastructure to the cloud what happens if the aws is also using this xyz motherboard in the back end same problem right okay so let's go for the c as well implementing a robust patch management solution okay this could be a case right but the problem in the robust patch management solution is that what if it is very difficult for this patch management solution particularly to work in the hardware remember what do we have two important components of an or any system hardware and a software software is pretty easy to fix it up right if let's say for example if there is any sort of a hardware sorry if there is a problem in my mobile phone we have all seen that if a new mobile phone a brand new mobile phone whether from apple samsung xiaomi any any provider vendor is being launched in the market initially it faces some sort of an issue a glitch it is easy to resolve it out within a day or two you will be getting up a uh, you know update you updated up your system within a 5 or 10 minutes right hardly 5 to 10 minutes it will be updating it up your system would be rebooting and you're good to go fine problem resolved but when it if you have a serious hardware problem uh, in your motherboard or in your storage of your mobile phone that cannot be resolved with an update okay so remember the patch management solution does not work very good with hardware vulnerabilities if there's a problem in your motherboard till some degree initially it will be resolved by an update but if the problem is very big trust me the updates would not be able to resolve it out okay that's the biggest problem now the d is designing new detective security controls okay this could be a thing but it's talk about detective control right it is not talking about resolving the uh, you know vulnerability or kind of avoiding that particular hardware which contain the vulnerability it's saying that okay use that particular uh, hardware which has some sort of a vulnerability but put detective control as well i do not think from my particular experience it's a great uh, way to think right okay you are absolutely aware about that your particular piece of an hardware is susceptible to certain kind of a virus or a attack but still you are using it up and setting up a detective control is not a great idea okay you're not resolving the problem you're just kind of creating up a security control there fine and detective control would be just alerting you it just will not even protect you as well that's also a big this problem there so this is also incorrect so the correct answer looks the a the a 
is purchasing the hardware from the different vendor. If XYZ is providing a motherboard or any kind of an equipment, hardware equipment, and it has some sort of a problem in itself, it's the best way to go to the other vendor and look for that thing, go to the other vendor and ask for that, you know, uh, any sort of a hardware part and use it up. Okay, that's the thing. That's, that's completely is the particular option that fits the requirement. Fine. Okay, that's the case. Okay, guys. So now let's look for the answer as well. Okay, so let's look for the particular question. What the question says that the question says that guys, after running of uh, after returning from a conference, a user's laptop has been operating slower than normal. Okay, and overheating. It means that some kind of a problem is there. Okay, let's look what the problem is, and the fans has been running constantly. Okay, so it means the fans is providing a good amount of air right circulations fine but still it's overheating right during this diagnosis process an unknown piece of hardware is found connected to the laptop motherboard which of the following attack vector has exploited to install the hardware fine so something was connected to their particular laptop after when the particular person returned from a conference okay so if you look for this thing the first option comes is the removable media it means that any sort of a hardware part you have in place right in the new removal media part you have some any sort of a uh, pen drive or any kind of cd fine or not not cd i would say but any sort of a pen drive or any kind of a device which is put there right and just connected which is called the removal media another one we have in place is called the spare fishing right so in spare fishing guys just give me a minute fishing is not uh, when uh, your particular is being targeted by a phishing attack, you does not see a problem of overheating. And when you, you know, when you do an analysis, what's the reason behind it? Definitely, for sure, there is no hardware piece which is attached to it. That is not any spare phishing or veiling or watering hole attack. No, that's not. Then you have the supply chain attack. Supply chain attack means the problem is arising from the manufacturer part. This removal media, right? unknown piece of an hardware right it comes already attached to a particular motherboard from your particular manufacturer if you have purchased a particular system from lap apple or microsoft or from dell anywhere this particular piece of an hardware would already comes from attached from the supplier as well that is called the supply chain attack so that's not the case because it is after returning from a conference right and direct access direct access means that particular attacker has a direct access of your laptop it's spying upon you so direct access is still not the case the problem here is pretty straightforward you return from a particular conference and you do the analysis that probably your laptop is not working you do the analysis you dig down what's the reason behind you find out a piece of an unknown hardware and definitely the out of the option provided a fills it up right removal media some sort someone has inserted any sort of a media removal media right pen drive kind of thing to a particular laptop which contains some sort of a virus and that virus is infected has infected your particular system in place that's the thing okay so a is the correct answer for that a is the correct answer fine okay guys so now guys now looks let's look for the next question in place okay this is the next question just guys let's go through it okay guys so let's look for the particular question the question says that a company store customer payment card data in a database that is not encrypted okay that's uh, concerning during a routine security review the organization realized that this practice is not in line with pci dss requirement right pci is payment card industry data security standard right it is kind of a, a thing which uh, all the organizations have to follow right if they want to be pci dss compliant fine uh, to protect the card holder data whether it's uh, your debit card or your credit card fine so what is the most appropriate action to achieve this particular thing right so first is continue storing the data at it is but implement strong access control no i would not say that because this data is still in plain text it will be creating up a lot of problem for you as well as for the customer do not do that okay you're not resolving the problem here just temporary setting up a control there does not help a lot 
okay then immediately encrypt the payment card data at the database absolutely must you have a problem you know this is called gap analysis right see you have a particular benchmark in place benchmark says that do this do that and in your respective organization there is a deviation from that particular benchmark that is called the gap analysis how far your organization has diverted from the benchmark if the benchmark says that create up a policy it has benchmark has said that these are the five rules you need to follow your organization is following three so see there is a gap right there is a gap of two that is called the gap analysis fine so that's the problem if that's the problem your organization is not encrypting the data immediately do it up okay in the c part it is saying that notify the customer about the situation and seek their consent to continue storing the encrypted data absolutely not because some point in time i also have seen is that across the world whether it's a developing country or the developed nations as well there is still you know uh, i would say illiteracy fine and people are digital illiteracy i would say people are not aware about what is an encryption what's importance it holds fine okay that's still the problem fine so still it doesn't make a sense that you approaching to a particular person who is not good in understanding about the encryption all these kind of things so it should not be a, the case okay then you have this d part temporarily hold the payment process absolutely not if you do it out definitely in your respective organizations or your customer is going to face a lot of problems and if that's the scenario you are going to get a very bad name bad reputation that you halted up a particular payment right imagine a scenario where a particular customer is in the middle of an emergency in the hospital and he need to pay the bills and suddenly you halted the particular all the payment part how bad the situation is right definitely for sure uh you are earning bad reputation due to that kind of thing in place right so that should not be the case so for this particular case scenario if you look the correct answer is immediately encrypt the payment card and you are good to go fine great so guys thank you for this particular wonderful session to attend 